winning. <laughs> Okay, so here's a video on a pretty important topic. We receive messages all of the time about our wheels and our tyres on our old motorhome. What sort of tyres do we run? Where do we get them from? What size are they? All these questions, as people are having trouble on their early model motorhomes out there that are similar to ours. Well, first up, I'm going to talk about the rims. In my case, our motorhome come with split rims or split ring style rims. And you're going to hear me say this a few times throughout this video. But here's the first one. Get rid of your split rims. Our Winnebago is a 1994 model and it left the factory in Japan with split ring wheels, as did many trucks back in the day. And in fact, Toyota Australia used split rims on their 79 series Land Cruisers right up until about 2014, when they finally deleted them from their new vehicles. Yes, Toyota got rid of their split rims. Get rid of them, they're no good. Why? Well, because quite simply, they're dangerous. The idea with them was that you could dismantle the wheel yourself on the side of the road, change or repair the inner tube, inflate it, and away you go. Now that's particularly handy if you are somewhere out there very remote. However, I've never actually seen anyone be able to do one. I asked my uh, old school tie fitter, who's been in the game for 50 years, uh, what the advantages were with split rims. And he immediately said, there are no advantages with split rims, Shannon. As a matter of fact, they're actually a disadvantage. And he said, Get rid of your split rims. Now, although no new cars today come with split rims, they aren't illegal yet. But WorkCover Australia have attended dozens of very serious injuries in tyre shops from these things, and tyre shops all around Australia are becoming hesitant to change splitties. If they do, WorkCover insists they are to be inflated inside of a safety cage. Now, that's something I certainly don't carry with me when I'm out there in the great outdoors. But you can use special harness straps apparently. So if it lets go, you won't get taken out by all the flying debris. So what is dangerous about split rims? What are the risks associated with using them? Well, officially, it's explained as, the failure of a multi-piece split rim wheel can result in a violent separation of the rim and tyre. The explosive release of high pressure air and the ejection of the componentry parts can cause serious injury or death. Not a good day. So what happens is, if the tyre and ring are not seated properly, when the tyre is being flated to high pressure, say 60 psi and above, the ring can actually pop out and be history. And you're probably going to say, hey, they work for 30 years, why all of a sudden are they no good? Just get a decent tyre fitter to fit them properly and they're fine. Well, you're right, kinda. We lapped Australia twice in our old girl and didn't have any problem, even when the going got really tough. But no matter how many tyre shops I called, nobody could actually give me a definitive answer on how low I could air down my tyres, especially before tackling Cape York last year. My truck tyres hold a maximum pressure of 110 psi, so if we aired down to, say, 50 psi and drove along extremely corrugated roads, would the ring stay in place and not separate? It seemed like nobody knew. Well, we in fact did air down to 50 psi and no lower and didn't have an issue and finished our trip. But I had the opportunity to speak with another old school style tyre shop recently and he was of the same opinion. They're dangerous, especially when they start getting old. 
and he asked me when I disassemble my rims to check out the steel ring as the ring gets very rusty and crusty and they lose their ability to seat nicely in the rim. Yep, mine were all rusty, very rusty. There's only an inch or so of strapped steel that's holding your tire onto the rim at the best of times. And you just have to hope that your tire fitter has done his job properly. Were we just lucky? Was it a matter of time? At the very least, it's only a matter of time before the tire shops just flat out refuse to service split rims. And then what do I do? So, yep, time to go. Get rid of them. So what are my options? My goodness, this has not been easy research for me and I spent months of quite frustrating homework into the issue. Many phone calls, many late nights online and lots and lots of reading. So you get to skip all that work as there just wasn't that in much information out there on a 1994 Isuzu NPR200 truck rims. So my options were, do I weld the ring on and make it a one piece wheel? No. I'd better get my wheel up to date if I attempt that. Plus, you probably wouldn't get the tire to push onto the rim properly ever again. What about super singles? Well, they're expensive, and I'll need an engineer's report. No thanks. How about alloy wheels? Well, they are expensive, and they've been known to have cracking issues, so forget it. Finally, I found a company right here in Australia called Mullins Wheels and they are the only company that have direct replacement Toyota Coaster rims, Hino rims, and rims for Isuzu trucks. They're a factory looking steel wheel. They're 16 inch diameter by five and a half inches wide with an offset of 115. Perfect. The exact same wheel as my old splits, only that it's a one piece. And there was my answer. They were around $220 each, so I bought seven of these and the split rims are now scrap metal. Oh, he got rid of the split rims. Thank goodness. I never thought I'd hear the end of it. Look, I had to modify the rear wheel nuts, but I feel good about the upgrade. They are safer. Any tyre shop can service me now, and the splitties are out of my life and I can still perform a puncture repair out in the field if I need to, just with the tubeless tyre plug kit that you can buy from any automotive shop. Now, tyres. Tyre size for Winnie is 700R by 16 light truck tyres. In our case, we went for an off-road style truck tyre with a 14 ply rating, which is a very heavy duty tyre indeed. The ATT304 from Hormax Tyres absolutely bulletproof with a load rating of 118 by 114. That means this tyre can hold 1.3 tonne per tyre and there's four of these on the rear of Winnie. Super strong sidewalls which is where the tyre strength comes from as well as the obvious puncture resistance that comes with a tyre with such a big high ply rating. You can run these tube or tubeless so you can have them on split rims or on one piece rims. I think they were around $300 each. They're a little difficult to find due to the old school tyre size, but I won't use anything else from here on in. The places where we took this two wheel drive motorhome loaded with all our gear, over 30,000 kilometres around the whole country, rough corrugations, off road at times for many hours. And we drove through rivers, hey, and we never got one flat tyre. So that's it from me. Jokes aside, please give it some very serious consideration regarding upgrading your split rims. There's a very compelling argument out there between split rims and solid wheels. I'm very happy with getting them off my truck and I never have to worry about them ever again. Righto, so keep rolling and we'll see you around. Get it, rolling, round. and you haven't subscribed, I know you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button now.
and turn on the notifications by clicking the little bell. Now! Now! Do it! Right now! Chop, chop!